along with Democrat Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. He's a key member of the Senate Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thank you for joining us on thank New President. Day. Do you believe the act named after Dr. Logan all those years ago in the 1700s, do you believe it applies today that this was seditious, treasonous, and really getting in the mix when they should not have? Is this against the law? Well, Chris, I don't know the law, but I'll tell you it was foolish. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to weigh in. The right way is to let the negotiators do their job, let them see if they can reach a deal, and then the deal will get put on the table and Congress will have an opportunity to weigh in. But these actions were basically seen as an action to undercut negotiation, to say that the United States is not interested in diplomacy, and we should never, never be sending that message. What does it mean to you that seven Republican senators would not sign on, most notably Senator Corker, who is obviously the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Foreign Intelligence Committee? Well, well, Chris, as you point out, that was very notable. Senator Corker and I, together with 14 of our colleagues, introduced a bill, I guess now two weeks ago, mm -hmm. to set a, 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 and bipartisan, seven Dems, seven Republicans, to establish a clear process for how Congress would take up a final deal if and when there is a final deal. And, and that's the way we ought to be doing this, bipartisan, deliberate. We don't need to declare an opinion or opine before there's a deal on the table to review. And so Senator Corker clearly, you know, thinks that there's a, a, a right way to do this, and that's why he wouldn't sign on to a letter trying to tank negotiations before they were done. In testing the uh, idea of the need for any legislation here, you said yourself, mm -hmm. Senator, that once they negotiate a deal, the president, the White House, those involved at the State Department would send it over to Congress for review. What do you need any kind of bipartisan congressional deal laying out a procedure? You know what the procedure is. Let them cut a deal, and then they'll show it to you. Well, the, the, the reason that we, I think a procedure helps is this letter of the 47 shows that there can be a little bit of a free-for-all about something like this, so why not establish pretty clear rules of the road? What our bill does, Chris, is this. It, it clearly sets out that the president has executive authority without Congress to lift sanctions that are executive in nature, mm -hmm. and there are some, or to encourage international partners to lift international sanctions. But when any deal touches upon the congressional sanctions that we enacted, at that point, that triggers a review period. During that 60-day review period, there can't be congressional sanctions relief. Congress has the opportunity to have hearings and either approve, disapprove, or take no action. And we define in our bill the effects of all of those right. uh, steps that Congress may take. So it gives everybody, including the Iranians, why would the Iranians make bold concessions on their program when they want to get out from under congressional sanctions if they have no knowledge about when right. or if Congress would ever weigh in? Let me ask you something about the premise of this letter, and then I want to move on to a couple other pressing yep. topics. The Senator Cotton says, you know, this is unprecedented because the president is unilaterally no negotiating with a terrorist entity in Iran about nukes and, you know, every other time that th this has been a treaty. Yeah, because a treaty, by definition, has a bargain on both sides. This is unilateral. Iran isn't going to get things from this. They already have the things. It's only about limiting them. Why is that idea lost on your brothers and sisters down there in Congress? This is not a treaty that's being negotiated. It's a unilateral set of restrictions. Well, well uh, Chris, let me explain. You're right. It's not a treaty. If it were a treaty, there's a clear process. Right. It would require a two-thirds vote in the Senate. It doesn't go before the House. This is not a treaty. But it is a bargain. The president is bargaining away a congressional sanctions regime. So um, th this isn't unrelated to Congress. The core of the sanctions that have punished the Iranian economy, that have brought them to the negotiating table, is a congressional statute. And the president doesn't have the power to just wave a wand and make that statute go away. Right. And, Iran, Iran, and Iran understands that. So everyone knows, everyone knows, Congress has got to weigh in at some point on this. The only question is how and when. And again, there's a right way and a wrong way. The letter trying to tank negotiations before they're done is the wrong way. All right, fair point on uh, the fact that Congress does have a role because it's your sanctions. Two other hot button issues. The impact yep. of the letter. You know, you are supposed to be holding AUMF hearings right now Today. Uh, to Today. figure out whether to authorize force. Very important. War going on by any other name. How will this affect that? 
Now, that's a great question, Chris. I, I gave a floor speech yesterday, <clears throat> and what I said was there is now a test about whether the Senate of the United States can entertain tough national security issues in a careful and deliberate way, or whether we're just going to be rushed and partisan. And it is posed very directly. We have a, a hearing today about the president's uh, proposed authorization for the war against ISIL, and we're then going to move very promptly into a markup of the, of the authorization and a floor vote. Right. Right. We have got to show the public, but especially the troops who are in harm's way, that we are going to deliberate about this in a careful way and not be rushed and partisan. And that is an unfortunate question that people have in their minds because of this letter and some other recent events. Not a time for the commitment of the U.S. to be questioned when you have Iran moving up onto the front lines with their advisors, in quotes, and being given more and more credit for the right. gains against Absolutely. ISIS. So we look forward Absolutely. to seeing what happens that. Quick take. If you were Hillary Clinton, okay... Would you release your server and say, here's everything, this is a non-issue, look at everything, I have nothing to hide, you're not creating a fake issue on me. Would you do that? You know, what I would do is I would make sure that every official email was released. And whether you have to do that via, with, with the server or whether what she's doing right now is she's saying every official email would be released, I think that's all she needs to do. She doesn't need to release personal emails. Nobody does. But just release all the official emails, and that's what she's committed to do. The State Department's looking at them, and, and I think we'll see those promptly. The concern is the specter of the unknown fuels all this speculation. And we're going to see more of it now. It's just ramping up, I'm afraid. Senator Kane, good to have Thanks, you Chris. on this morning. We look forward to progress on the AUMF. Me too. Michaela? All right.